Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I'm going to show you how I spent 24 hours in Madrid. Talk about the must-see sites, some great places for food, and help you plan your time, especially if you will only be there for a day or two. Madrid has a lot to offer, so let me show you around some of this incredible city. If you are new here, I have created this channel to help you learn about how to travel, adventure, and have fun on the road to financial independence. I've traveled the world, I own a couple of houses in Spain, and I'm on a creative journey to financial independence. I believe the road to financial freedom can and should be fun. I hope you'll subscribe and join me on this journey no matter where you are starting from. Earlier this week, I made a 24-hour stop in Madrid, and I wanted to make the most of it. You see, I've been to Madrid twice before, but I had never tried sightseeing or spent any time researching with intention. To plan this particular trip, rather than just spending time on Google, I messaged a friend of mine who has spent a bit more time in Madrid and asked for her advice on what I should see if I only had a short period to visit. I'm going to take you to see some of the places that she recommended to me, and I'll show you a few of the other spots I visited as well. Madrid is the capital of Spain and the most populous city in the country. It is located in the center of the Iberian Peninsula at the head of the Manzanares River. Madrid was founded in the 9th century by the Moors and it became the capital of Spain in the 16th century. Madrid became an important center for the Moors and it was the site of a number of important battles during the Reconquista, the Christian reconquest of the Iberian Peninsula from the Moors. In year 1561, King Philip II of Spain made Madrid the capital of Spain. This decision was made for a number of reasons, including the city's central location, its strategic importance, and its proximity to the royal palace. Madrid's status as the capital of Spain helped to boost the city's economy and population. Madrid has a long and rich history, and it's a city that is full of culture and tradition. The city is home to many important museums, art galleries, and historical monuments. Madrid is also a popular tourist destination, and it is known for its lively nightlife and its delicious food. Speaking of the food, let me take you to see my first stop after arriving at my hotel in Madrid, which was Entre Santos Madrid. It is described on Google as a cheery tavern serving up tapas, eclectic entrees, and creative cocktails in a warm atmosphere. I think that's a pretty good description, especially the part about the eclectic entrees. We started with a beer and wine and a complimentary plate of these crispy bread bites with a truffle dip followed by a cheese board and bread. The cheese was served with a jelly of sorts that was an excellent pairing. Everything was delicious. Next arrived the patatas bravas, which is a common dish in Spain that always has some sort of potato, a slightly spicy red sauce, and an aioli, which is like a garlic flavored mayonnaise. This was certainly the most creative way that I've seen patatas bravas served. The white sauce you see on top was more of a foam than you would expect in most places. Very fancy. Then came my favorite dish of the evening, which was certainly the most creative as well. This was a goat cheese stuffed mushroom that was fried with this crispy straw-like coating, topped with pistachios, and served with a mango foam. It was an explosion of both savory and sweet flavors that complemented each other in a really fun way. I was fortunate enough to be staying in a hotel nearby where it was easy to walk to everything central. Actually, I'm not sure it qualifies as a hotel, but it was great either way. I ended up booking with Hotels.com, and I don't remember the name of the listing, but it ended up being with a place called Woohoo Suites. When I was looking for it on Google Maps, my friend was like, you booked us at a place called Woohoo? I was like, I didn't know that was the name, but it looks really good in the photos. And sure enough, the great reviews had been right. It was incredible. Of course, I didn't know there were multiple places in Madrid under this one company name, so we accidentally ended up at the hostel that is run by the same company. But it was okay. It only took us an extra 10 minutes to walk to the correct location. I loved this room. It was a cute studio with a king-size bed, high ceilings with stunning doors that opened to a little balcony overlooking the street. It was very clean and the bathroom was excellent as well. If I ever stay in Madrid again, I will definitely be staying there. I paid 90 euro for the one night. If you follow my channel, you know that I usually book Airbnbs for long-term stays, but if I'm only staying a night or two, I almost always book a hotel. 
Too many hosts don't have an automated check-in process, and that's one of the reasons I prefer a hotel of sorts. Like I mentioned before, I book my hotel stays with Hotels.com. I've got an affiliate link in the description, so when you book your next hotel stay, be sure to use that link and it will help you get a great deal on a room and it will help me keep making content. Okay, so I was pooped after a long two days of travel and could only muster the strength to get dinner and then go back to the hotel to crash. The next morning I got up really early to hit the streets of Madrid. I was on limited time, so I started by walking to the El Retiro Park, which is the massive park within the center of Madrid. On my way there, I passed the Bank of Spain, as well as this historic Plaza Cibeles. The buildings are breathtaking. This park belonged to the Spanish monarchy until the late 19th century when it became a public park. It is full of various gardens and you could easily enjoy walking the park for hours. There are also also rowboats available for rent as well as horse-drawn carriage rides. I'm sure there is an online calendar as well as there are many festivities held throughout the year at this beautiful park. Not far from the park and right across from this 1500s monastery, San Geronimo el Real, is the Museo Nacional de Prado which has a wealth of paintings by Spanish masters and other artists from the rest of Europe between the 15th and 19th centuries. For all of my budget-minded travelers, I have a special tip for you. Instead of paying the 15 euro admission fee, if you go on Monday to Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. or Sundays and holidays from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., admission is free. Some other places that my friend recommended but that I didn't have time to visit were Sabatini Gardens in front of the National Palace and 9CR7, which is a hotel rooftop bar owned by Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, you might be wondering why I've been to Madrid a couple of times before and I've never seen any of the things that I went to check out this time. Well, my friend that I met up with in Madrid previously is the one that I would always go thrift shopping with. And Madrid actually has some really great thrift shops, many of them grouped together in one area of town. On my previous trip, that is where we spent almost all of our time. If we weren't sleeping, eating, or drinking, we were thrifting. Madrid is actually where I bought one of my favorite thrift items ever, a brown leather Italian Air Force jacket that I picked up for just 50 euro. I remember an older gentleman, a veteran from the US, recognizing the jacket and telling me more about its roots. Well, on this trip, I got to see a bit more of what the city has to offer, and I can't wait to come again for a more in-depth visit. One of my favorite things to do anywhere in Spain is sitting down to have a coffee and some good food. You never have to look very far. So before taking off for Pago, I had one last coffee and enjoyed some delicious food in an outdoor cafe. Now I drove to Madrid, but it would be really easy to just take public transportation from the airport to the city center and then walk just about everywhere. It's also pretty easy to get from city to city. Madrid offers high-speed trains to Barcelona, Valencia, Malaga, Alicante, and several other cities as well. If you're just visiting the big cities, you really don't need a rental car. Personally, I find it pretty stressful to drive within the hustle and bustle of the city centers, so unless I had a significant reason like I did on this trip, I wouldn't plan to bring a car. Plus, parking in the city center can be over 30 euro for a 24-hour period. If you come to Spain, give yourself a few days to spend in Madrid, see the history, experience the food and drinks, and I highly recommend a little thrifting. And then if you have any time left over, do what I always do, wander. Just put your phone away, get lost, and walk into some of the most beautiful surprises. I do hope you'll take a moment to like this video, say hello in the comments, and subscribe to join me every day, where travel and adventure build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.